Hey family, how are you? And we are still in the very, very beginning of Just Jazzy in June where we are posting a vlog every day for the month of June. Listen, I made a video the other day about embarrassing moments. And you know, I just was telling y'all, you know, some of the embarrassing things I went through. And I was telling everybody else like, hey, share some of the things you've been through because this is a safe platform. Although a lot of people shared in the comment section, I had a ton, my DMs was bombarded with things that people was just like, they wasn't too comfortable with sharing it in the comment section. Although we ha ha kiki a lot, there was a lot of trauma, like a lot of trauma. And I want us, especially as black and brown people, I want us as a whole, but especially heavy on it, as brown and black people to come to terms with our trauma. I want us to be able to say, damn, this wasn't normal. I don't think that's right. That's something I don't want to do. And that's coming from somebody like me who conscious parent. I don't like the words gentle parent because I throw a couple curse words out very often so i don't gentle parent I, I try to gentle parent i'm more so conscious parent and that means i'm just aware of how i parent and how it affects my children versus just going with my learned behavior and learned behavior is how our parents raised us the things they did to us things that we unintentionally do to our children because our parents did it to us so with that being said i want to share a part of me that's very traumaful like I'm not gonna say that you guys could relate because I don't think it's not even funny. I don't think that no one can. Like, I'm gonna share some things from my childhood that as an adult, I realize this isn't normal. And I know you may be taken back by some of the things I'm about to say, but just keep in mind that as a child, you don't know anything. You only know what you are taught right and you only do what you are exposed to so as a child i don't know these things aren't normal even as an adult i didn't know these things wasn't normal i had to learn like oh wait that's not normal and i don't want to be that way to my kids right so these are a few things that happened in my childhood that's really traumatic and honestly I can't believe it was my life. I will warn you before starting this video that some things might be triggering and some things might be a little traumatic. So if you are the type of person who feel like I'm not mentally stable to hear nor see those type of things, I think you should skip this video for a later time. So one of the things I can remember from my childhood that affected me in my adulthood and I had to come to terms with, if you've been here on this journey with me for a while, you'll always hear me say like, I don't like pets. No, I don't like pets. And that's why when I got princess, people was like, this bitch got a dog like if you knew me and you've been here for a minute you knew i stood firm on i never had a pet don't want a pet don't need a pet don't like pet. i had to dig deeper and say jasmine why are you this way because y'all remember when kaisha got cody i was like i get that dog away from me i love it but i don't like it and i was just like nah getting a pet is i'm not a pet person and i had to dig deep into that trauma to say you know what because she's a pet lover and i had to say where is it stemming from so as a child right my older brother we my mom always would bring a random cat a random dog a thousand dogs in my household right and till my mother passing she would say about my older brother he's gonna live a life of hell he's going to live a life for everything he's ever done and i never really understood it so every time we got a pet Let's say my mother come home with a dog, my brother come home with a dog. My brother would do things to the animals. I remember my mother bringing home the cutest little doggy and I wanted to love it, but I had to go to school and I was so excited in school. I couldn't wait to get home from school to see this doggy. And I was like, oh my God, I'ma see this doggy. I got home. My mother was a diabetic and this back in the days, I don't know if they still take insulin nowadays, but this back in the days, like Novolin 7030, when you had to take the needle and draw the insulin out, right? My older brother took my mother's insulin, took, to, took the needle, had to draw that shit back to about a hundred cc's. He took the needle and shot the dog up with insulin. So much insulin. I remember I wanted to play with the dog. The dog started foaming from the mouth and the dog started running, 
running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, mad fast, foaming out the mouth, going crazy, and the dog just dropped. Dropped on his back, paws in the air. When I say saddened, I was so sad by the situation, and I was like, oh, hell no. And then I remember he got two Rottweilers. They were supposed to be the family Rottweilers. And these dogs was just so cute and so sweet. And they used to like run through the house and play around and stuff. It bit him one time. I don't know what he did to the dog, but for whatever reason, the dog bit him. And when it, it like bit him, it like grabbed and it was like shaking him. So in return, the other dog attacked as well. He took the dogs, yes, in front of me, in front of all of us as children. He took the dogs took the leash, tied the leash around both the doors neck, took them to the backyard, hung them from the fire escape, pulled out his gun and unalived them. Yes, both of the animals, right in front of us. I said, hell no. And as an adult, I knew that I never wanted a pet. I never wanted to love something that I knew would hurt. Like, I just didn't want to feel that pain. I didn't want to feel that hurt. So in return, I never wanted a pet. And my mother always used to say about my brother, he does really, really bad things. And he's really going to live a life of hell. And my brother going through it at this big grown age. And all I could always hear is my mother's voice. I've watched as a child, as a child, my brother do the most craziest, insane things that I could remember so clear. I remember when we first moved to Brooklyn because we lived in Manhattan in a shelter until I was about maybe six years old. Moved to Brooklyn. We lived on Van Buren Street between Kosciuszko and Broadway. We lived next to a tire shop and it was this rich white man who owned the tire shop. He had all these fancy cars, girl. He owned the, the, the tire shop, the cleaners and the corner store. So, you know, he was getting money out. He was our neighbor. He didn't live there, but he had his businesses there. So he'd be there like all day and at night and he would park his cars on the lot. Like he even owned a lot across the street. So he would park his cars. It was a late night. I'm, I'm a kid, like I'm, I'm little bro. I had to be like maybe nine. My brother said, I see my brother put a mask on, put his hoodie on. He said, oh, go in the house. I'm like, all right, I'm being nosy. I just closed the door and I look out the peephole. Sure enough, as soon as that man came out, I watched my brother pull his gun out, rob that man blind. When I tell y'all stories upon stories I could remember about him, I remember <laughs> my brother called himself being a pimp and he had prostitutes. And I don't know if you know anything about the Bronx, but it, back in the days, it was this place called Hunt's Point and that was like the strip. One time he brought this girl home and I'm hype because I'm a little kid. I don't know. He brought this girl home. I thought I had a big sister. So he bring her home because she, she's young. She looked like she about maybe 14, 15. She, he bring her home. I'm so hyped. The girl doing my hair. I'm like, oh my God, I got a sister. I'm so excited. Like, oh my God. She did my hair for school. She got me dressed. My dude, he's a grown man. He's bringing these prostitutes in my mother's house. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so hype, I'm so hype. She did my hair, she sent me off to school. I was like, okay, I'm gonna see you when I get home. I'm so hype, like I got me a sister. I'm walking to school, I see these posters. I'm walking down Broadway, cause I go to PS309 and I'm on Broadway and the posters is posting up. And I'm walking, I'm looking, I'm like, what the f ain't this? I see missing posters. I'm like, ain't this the girl that's in my house? So I'm going and I'm looking. I'm like, wait a minute. Missing 16-year-old girl? What? I'm like, this the girl. I know I'm not crazy. This is the girl that's in my house. Girl, I couldn't wait to get off school. I'm like, you know, we ain't had no phones or nothing. I couldn't take no picture. I'm like, mommy, this girl is on posters. Like, this girl is a missing child. Like, she's on posters my mother like what i'm like mommy you better get this girl out of here like this girl is a missing girl they looking for this girl and sure enough 
I, my mother was like, exactly told me that that girl's on the post. I'm calling the police. He got her out of there. Hot flash in a hurry, honey. Let's not talk about <laughs> how, I don't know what he did, but he was on the run. And we lived in an old house and it was like a, what do you call it? It's not a cellar. I forgot what you call it, but it's a really old, like, apartment building it's not even a house and like behind the door there was like a scaffold like i don't know what they used it for back in the days but you could literally open it i don't know what it was but it looked like it was a thing that you could go like this with and it goes up to the next floor that's how old the building was so my brother was on a run and the police would come to the house a lot looking for him so there was a routine if you hear the police knock on the door you let him know he goes inside of it and you close it it like blends in with the wall so you can't even tell what it is and this was the routine for years, like three, four years. One time the police knocked and my stepfather opened up the door too fast. And when he opened up the door, them police came running in there. He was sitting right there. As soon as, they, as, soon as, as soon as my stepfather opened up the door, he was sitting right there. Them police said, gotcha. He tried to run off the fire escape. They ran through my house. I was like, oh hell no listen i got stories and stories and stories for days my older brother done traumatized me to death okay another thing that is so crazy and so triggering for me and i just dealt with this the other day and i had to come and i had the conscious parent y'all know how faith she's a big girl but she really loves her baby dolls still like she really really loves her baby dolls that was me until I was like 14 years old. I, nobody loved their baby dolls more than me. If anybody know me, I used to take my allowance money and go buy strollers and stuff for my baby doll, real clothes, real formula, real milk. I love these baby dolls so much. And sometimes people tell me like, you think that's why you a mother? Like you was a young mom cause you loved your baby doll so much? when I think about it, it gets much deeper than that. So I always tell y'all how my mom took everybody in. Crackheads, people off the streets, any and everybody. My mother was gonna let you stay there. There was this one crackhead. I'm sorry, I, I, I have to say her name and I'm gonna say her name only because if her son is watching this, I want him to know how bad I loved him. He was the first child I've ever loved as a child myself. I was a little kid, bro. A little child. I had to be about 12 years old. And Deb, she had a baby. All her other kids was got taken away from her, but this baby, they let her keep. And his name was Malik. She had this baby. She came home from the hospital and she used to smoke crack with the baby. So it triggers for more than just that. Like just me having baby dolls is not why I became a young mom. I was fast in my ass. That's one of the reasons why. But besides that, my love was deeper than the dolls. I remember my mother let this one crackhead live in her house, right? And she had a lot of kids, but all of her children got taken, taken away like prior to her knowing my mom. And she ended up getting pregnant and having a baby. She would go in my mom's bathroom, like the day she brought the baby home, she would go in my mom's bathroom and she would smoke crack and let the baby cry for hours. And my mother was a drug dealer, so she wasn't paying no baby, no mind. I would hide in the closet with the baby because I didn't want her to take the baby or harm the baby. So at a little age, at this little, I had to be like 11, 12 years old. I knew how to make formula, do all this stuff because I was taking care of the baby and I didn't want her to hurt the baby. So I would hide in the closet with the baby, right? she would breastfeed the baby with like and, and be drinking a beer in this hand like drinking the beer while she's breastfeeding and i will never forget the day i was hiding in the closet with him because i was i was smart as a kid i knew when people was high and stuff like i knew i knew she was high and i knew she was drunk and she would bug out like she would just bug out she was bugging this day so i remember taking the baby i took the baby bottles pampers all that and i hid in the closet good this time like i even put the clothes over us and i hid in the closet and her and my mom happened to get in an argument she was like give me my effing baby where my effing baby jasmine come out with my baby come out with my baby and i was crying so hard because i didn't want to give her the baby because i knew that she was really really drunk this time and i never even seen her this drunk and she was like bring my fucking baby bring my fucking baby and my mother like give her a fucking baby right now and i'm crying i'm like no no i don't want to give her the baby so i gave her the baby 
she leaves next thing you know we see like all these police officers on the block fire department everything i'm like what the what the hell is happening we all go outside as soon as i step out the house you see the baby blood leaking all from the baby's face people was holding her down somebody had hit her beat on her she was so drunk when she took the baby from me the baby started crying she got to the corner the baby was in the stroller she started hitting the baby in the face to make the baby stop crying people so happened to see started beating on her called the police the ambulance came everything they took him from that very day they took him and they locked her up and I was just like so hurt beyond it. And ACS took him away, never gave him back. And that was still my mother friend. And she still came around every day, still around like nothing, like nothing ever happened. And I disliked her so bad after that. And I had to still call her auntie. And I was so mad. I was so mad. And I was like, I'm going to have a baby of my own. And I'm going to treat my baby so good. And nobody going to do nothing to my baby. And nobody never going to hurt my baby. So it stems more from just like, oh, she played with dolls for so long. That's why she had kids so young. It really stemmed from more than just that. Funny, not so funny, childhood trauma I have. I grew up in a household where everyone was on a substance. Every single person. My mother wasn't because she was the dealer. Everybody was on something. I could spot, I could look at you right now. I'd be like, yeah, she drank. She got the shakes. I could see it in her eyes. She have dope. She have coke. She smoke weed. Like I can look at you and know what substance you take. Oh, she on meth. If you shoot it, if you snort it up, oh, she got the drip. Like, I grew up around it so much, I didn't know it wasn't the norm. I thought everybody drunk beer. I thought, <laughs> that's the reason why now I don't do any drugs. And I, I was in my late 20s to even taste alcohol because I didn't want to be like the people around me. Thank God I didn't fall a victim to my circumstance. I will never, now this is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. <laughs> I was an adult at this point. I, I was grown. And I had lived, my first apartment was directly next door to my mom. Like, you know those two family homes? Well, the landlord did it the illegal way and it's supposed to be like a downstairs and an upstairs, but he cut the downstairs into two apartments and the upstairs into two apartments. So I was like apartment 2A, my mother was 2B. Uh, I was an adult. I was paying rent. My rent was like $900. And I needed some money on. And I was like, you know what? I ain't got no money. And I asked my mama for some money because I needed to pay my rent and I had three kids. My mother was like, if you want to work for me. And I was like, girl, I ain't slaking no damn drugs. You got me up. She like, no, do me a favor, bag up for me. Why I knew how to bag up, don't ask me. When you grow up around it, you already know how to do it. So, of course, I knew how to bag up. And I'm like, damn, I really need this money. So, I'm going to do it. She gives me all the materials. I'm in there doing it. I'm thinking I'm good because I got my gloves on. Cutting, slicing, bagging, cutting, slicing, bagging. My fingers start to go numb. I'm like, the fuck? Like, I can't feel my hands. My tongue start to get numb. I'm like, oh my God. I think she just turned me into a crackhead by default. What the hell is happening to me? It was going through my pores. Although I had one pair of gloves on. First of all, you need heavy duty gloves. I had one pair of thin ass gloves on. I've been bagging up for mad long. So it's seeping in my pores and it's getting me high. And although I wasn't slumped out crackhead high, it was starting to affect me because it was going in my pores. And at that very moment, I said, oh my God, what, what was I thinking? Like, I'm literally getting high off crack right now. Like, although I'm not smoking it, it's giving me high. And I didn't feel the full effect of high because once my hands started going numb and my tongue started going numb, I put it down and I'm like, oh, hell no, I'm not doing this. And it's just like, what the? Now, if that could happen to you and you're not physically doing the substance, imagine people who physically smoking it. That's why they be on cloud 66. 
they don't be feeling no pain because baby i was numb i was starting to drool i said yeah um normal people don't go through stuff like this why did i experience that don't ask me weird habit that i have i know this is bad and i try now not to be this way but i will very much admit that i still do it and i'm working on it i look at everybody as a predator <sighs> i was 14 years old dating a 19 year old and when i say this 19 year old was taking over my brain like he was he first of all he broke my virginity second of all he was telling me crazy things like this is mine you can't give it to nobody else like this man had me laid up in a crack house like he he had my mind girl and then when i got older to realize that is a predator baby you was 14 years old he was 19 years old and all of this was happening right under adults noses right uh, girl literally <laughs> my mother was so caught up in a man i will i will never forget the day that 19 year old first touched me like i will never forget we was my mother my stepfather cheated on my mother my mother was going to fight the girl nobody was there to babysit me and my mother said come along we all got into a cab it was my mother got in first he got it after and when i went to get it he put his hand on the seat and i sat on his hand and that was the he was touching me along the ride i'm 14 he's 19 years old it was a pleasure full it, it felt pleasure to me and then he was telling me stuff and he was dating me he was telling me like you can't tell nobody this is our little secret like and this went on from for many many years many 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 years and that's a predator baby and guess what his mom caught him one time and she was like you better leave that little girl alone and you better never do it again he just got better at doing it that's all and then when i became of age he came out telling everybody i love her I love her so much. So I turned 18. Oh my God, I love her. And he started blatantly flirting with me, talking to me in front of the whole family. And everybody was just like, you, do you like that little girl? She's still a little girl, but she 18 now. So people don't know he was doing that since I was 14. It in turn made me look at everybody as a predator. I don't care if you're a woman, because people got this concept in their head that only men could be predators. Nope. I suffer from that so bad at this point. Like, I don't play with nobody with my children. My children can't even sleep at family members' house. You hear me? I am now. Ask Kaisha how bad I was when she first met me. It was so bad. They couldn't spend a night at their daddy's house. I don't know who your daddy got in that house. It, 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 listen, it was bad. It, it was real bad. And now I'm getting better. But I'm not going to lie to you and say it's not still present. These guards and these antennas be up, baby. I be talking to my kids in tricky world. Hey, baby, anybody would anybody play the game with you and said, don't tell mommy? Did, did anybody tell you an adult secret and said, if you tell mommy that you'll get in trouble? Tell me what type of games y'all play. Did anybody play hide and seek? Did anybody hide under the covers with you? And I'll be like, damn, Jasmine, you got to stop. You have to stop. Because it's like I'm so scary all the time. I, my, I, at my kid's grown age, Alyssa, at her grown 16-year-old age, I be told, anybody says something, anybody touched you in any personal areas, anybody told you something was a good sensation, I'm very open and I, I ask questions. And they get frustrated with me. They be like, mommy, come on. Why are you saying stuff like that? I just want to know. And I want you to know that don't ever be afraid to come tell me anything and don't let no adult get in your head and tell you anything i don't care what they say i don't care what they tell you i feel like i tell them what predators are all that and sometimes i'll be like damn i need to chill because that's my childhood trauma that i'm pushing off on them so that part i'm still working on honey worst of the worst as a grown person i dated a man who was addicted to p-o-r-n 
mm -mm. not regular like he used to make me feel like crap because i used to catch him watching it all the time or i used to be asleep he's in the bathroom watching it like what are you watching it for if i'm right here like he could and i will never forget one time i call him in the bathroom watching it i'm like bro you're weird like i'm right here why are you watching it then he's watching weird stuff like hispanic takes bbc and hispanic this and hispanic that i'm like first of all i'm black as it come what are you typing that stuff in for so he misinterpreted it as oh she don't mind me watching it she just cares what i'm watching so the next time i go through this he thinking like i meant i want him to watch more relatable stuff like stuff that that's like me go through this nigga phone he putting in bbw bbw this black bbw that ebony bbw this now you're pissing me off now you're really pissing me off i say yeah you gotta go you, 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 I'm breaking up with you because you're you pissing me off. Last but definitely not least, I I, 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 I just I gotta go after this. This is a habit that I see my mama do, that I do, that I'm making sure my is somebody on fire? Did somebody die? No, that I'm making sure my children don't inherit, baby. And this is where my conscious parenting really kick in. And now that I have three big teenagers, I know a lot of women will never admit this out in public. And maybe you don't even realize it yourself. But as your comfort zone, let me be the first to tell you what I do. I got it from my mama. I never get over somebody without getting under somebody. There has never been a time, there has never been a time where I just like had a breakup and then took a little break for myself and just loved me and just moved on. I did the same thing my mama did. The only way I can get over somebody is getting under somebody new. I jumped from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship. Even with my last relationship, where was the gap? Did y'all see it? Because one minute y'all saw my baby daddy, and the next 24 hours y'all saw Kaisha. And that's exact the moon though, how the hell it went too. Ain't gonna lie to you, ain't gonna lie about you. When y'all see my baby daddy before that, while I wasn't on social media like that, because they was coming like buses. Miss one, next one coming. Back, 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 back. It was, it was back, the back, the back, the back. It was like I wasn't even letting the niggas heal. They was coming back like, damn, I thought this was a play breakup. Oh, baby, I ain't coming back. I got somebody new. I never got that chance to love me. So before I get out of here, crazy story how God worked. I got with Kaisha. And it just so happened, it's the first time I've really been in love with somebody and they couldn't do my norm. Like usually I get with somebody, we move in together, we under each other 24 hours, it turns bad, I find somebody new, I move on. That's, that's the regular schedule program. But with her, it was like, she couldn't move in with me. I'm not moving in with you, I got a baby. And I, I ain't no room for me to fit in your house. These last four years, this is the most alone I've ever been in my life. But I've been too in love with a person to get under somebody new. So during these last four years, I got to know me mentally, physically, and emotionally. And now I am a person that I never knew I could be. Never knew. For the first year of me and Kaisha relationship, it was COVID. Like the smack dead middle of COVID. So the world was on standstill we was up under each other like it was like my regular schedule routine regular thing it was everything i'm used to then real life happened she had to go back to work she had a son she had a career she had to go to school she did not have time for me and i'm keeping it i'm being real she didn't have time for me i was alone alone learning to love me now bro i'm so in, at peace with myself i will sit in nothing feels better than me sitting in my room turning on my tv at the nice hot shower and my reruns of my law and order episodes being by myself i used to couldn't sit by myself without the music playing because i didn't want to think i'm so in love with my thoughts i'm so in love with me i'm so in love with being alone sometimes i get so caught up with being by myself when she be like hey you want to hang out i'll be like well, I got a date with me tonight. Like, I just, I I never knew what it felt like to just love you, bro. Like, to be like, nah, 
by myself ain't so bad at all and it just so happened that i'm with somebody that i love and now that i know how to be by myself i don't feel so obligated to need this person this relationship is a one and you shouldn't be in a space where you need anybody it should be a plus it should be a one it should be an asset and it also allowed me to know the things that i stand for and the things i don't stand for because when you get some time by yourself you be like i can't believe i let this nigga do this to me like, i can't believe i was in love with this bum like mad things that you fell for you be like yeah what was you thinking <laughs> you're bugging out so i'm gonna get out of here but as always this comment section is a safe place and i really really want to start this conversation like tell me something that you are conscious parenting about or a childhood trauma that's affected you that you're aware of that you're like uh -uh, ain't happening in my household even if it's like damn my mom and my daddy used to beat the out of me so i made it my choice not to beat my children whether it's like anything like any anything you just remember and you like hold on i think that caused me some trauma and i don't i don't want to pass that down a lot definitely share it because this is an open conversation that we should have and believe this is a safe place until next time family actually i'll see y'all tomorrow see you tomorrow